Now, it's great that you're able to join again and take a little time to listen to the side by side. And as I've been saying, going through Romans chapter 8, uh, as described as the the very point of the diamond in the ring, the ring that is Romans in the middle of Scripture as something so dazzlingly true and helpful and hopeful. It really is a big bit of pressure. So I hope that I'll be able to give a little insight as all I'm able to do in these few minutes is point you in one place that could maybe give you a really good foothold. In fact, I've been kind of thinking of the analogy of someone who's climbing. That's what came to mind as I was sort of reflecting on this. And you know, when a person's got a climbing wall or maybe just climbing up an ordinary face of a mountain, a climber will always be looking for the next handhold, as it were, and the next, they're kind of charting their path up the side of the face or up the face of this cliff face, mountain or whatever. And that's what we're doing. And, and so we're now going to move on to this section in Romans 8, which takes us really the, this is an important part about the work of the Holy Spirit. The first bit we talked about being justified and what that means that we're not condemned, which I suppose is the negative way of looking at I'm justified. I'm not condemned. And that means I'm not condemned right now. I don't have to wait to some future date to hear the, the judgment on my life. My judgment as a believer took place with and in Jesus Christ on the cross. So we have that behind us and we can look forward to what God has prepared for us. But today we're going to think about the second of these four things we mentioned yesterday, and that's the, the work of the Holy Spirit in us, this work, this capacity, this ability that we have. And, you know, let's try and get a little bit of a handle around this idea of the mind, you know, thinking the mind that is set on. And that's the way it's put here in this, the mind set on the flesh or the mind set on the things of the spirit. See that there in verse three. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. So we're thinking about this setting our mind. So what does it mean to have our mind set on the things of our sinful nature? It means this, I think, to have a mind that is devoid of thinking about God or to even take into account what God thinks about whatever it may be, how God sees it. In other words, someone is saying God has absolutely no place in their thinking. Whatever they're doing, be it in business or politics or family or recreation or friendship, giving or receiving, spending or planning. God is nowhere in their thoughts. He does not even exist. It's as if life is lived in a sort of a sealed off compartment from God. It's just us. It's just me. It's just this life. In this, a person can be really fair hearted in some measure, even religious. God doesn't have to be there for it to be religious which is just, well, religion is self-effort, self-generated without repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. But it's still God rejecting. You can be a fair-minded person, good-hearted as some people describe it, but it's not accurate, really. So I think you could say this describes the world of millions today. In fact, it describes everybody's world until they come to the point where by the Spirit of God, there's an awakening, an awakening to the reality of their true nature, that's what Paul's been dealing with up to this point, the true nature of our sin and how we are guilty before God. I certainly think that the culture is truly reflected in this mindset. God has no place whatsoever. But Romans 7, if you think about it, always uses the personal pronoun I so many times. I, I, I. And when Paul is talking there about the struggle that he has, but now in Romans 8, it's all about the Holy Spirit. Multiple times he speaks about the Holy Spirit. So the subject of seven is my personal struggle. The subject of eight is my great helper. So that having to struggle with this mind that's devoid of the thinking of God, now by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit enables me to think in a totally different way. Isn't that so important? Now, last Sunday, that would be the 14th of March. I don't know when you're listening to this, but if you're listening in the, in the chronology of my recording, it's last Sunday. And we were thinking about four Beatitudes in Luke 6, and they very much typify these two mindsets. There's the mind that's thinking spiritually, 
and the mind th is thinking outside of the reference to God. So there are those who are poor in spirit, who hunger after righteousness, who are, who are willing to joyfully suffer uh, for their faith along with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, they have this, that, that's, those are the sort of things that describe the life of pers a person who's, who's thinking spiritually. And then the life of the person who's unspiritual, it's just fun and favor with people and popularity and finance and all of those things. It's merely here and now. God is not in it. Now, understanding those two outcomes, those two minds, the mind devoid of thinking of God or the mind that thinks of God and through his truth in all things. That is the person who thinks like that, who confirms by that way of thinking that the Holy Spirit is within their spirit and has changed them. And he has delivered us from condemnation. He has delivered us from the power of sin and from the power of death. Now, not actual death, which we will all experience because of the natural outworking of sin, but the power of death spiritually. And God will give us a new body then at a later date at the, sec at the next, at the resurrection. Now, sometimes we feel that it's always other people who speak about the Holy Spirit and we just kind of feel second rate. Are you one of those people? You know, you get in a group of people and they're all talking about what the Holy Spirit is doing, the dramatic things and the dramatic gifts and the dramatic activities. And you know, you can really feel as though the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with your life. But this passage clearly teaches us that the most amazing work of the Holy Spirit is going on in us and for us when we have that God orientation in our day to day. When we are praying as we could and should as Christ taught us, calling out and claiming the Lord Jesus. When we are seeking to honour God in all our days, when we're shopping or working or speaking or leisure, whatever, or when we look at our bank account in a way that we want to honour the Lord, or when we speak in a way that we want to give glory to God, or when we feel sorrow at sin and we know what to do about this to run to the Lord Jesus, or when we feel compassion towards others and guilt when we don't show it as we should. See, these things, these are all the active works of the Holy Spirit in your life. And so while you say, oh, I'm not really that, you know, like those others, they can touch people and they're healed and they can understand what people are thinking. No, this work of change in your life is a real deep work of God's Spirit so that you are a spiritual person. You are a person in whom the Spirit of God is at work. And isn't that marvellous? That's just tremendous. And so now you and I, have the power to do what is good and pleasing, the will of God. And so it says here that we have an obligation, we are debtors to live not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And you know, if you didn't know that and get up every day and think, I just have to go on with my life and struggle, <laughs> do you know that's such a disappointment? And it would be a great, great loss. And it reminds me of a time when I was in Romania many years ago. And I had gone there to visit one of our missionaries and to try to encourage them and get to know better the situation that I could then bring home a better picture and how we could help them. But I also brought with me some other things to give to people like doctors and individuals. But when I was there, I got sick and I became really quite ill. I came home and I went to the doctor and she gave me one tablet. And I said, only one tablet? She says, yes, this is a new tablet on the market. And you know what? I had a whole bag or box of those tablets with me in Romania, which I gave to a doctor. I didn't know what I had. I had all of the capacity in my bag to enable me to find the cure, to make me well. I just didn't know I had it. And you and I need to, this is what, the passion of my heart is today for you is that you would know the power of God through his spirit in your life so that you realize you do have this power. You have this power to have that daily orientation of your life towards the Lord, to think as he thinks, to pray as he prays, to honor him, to live in a way that glorifies him so that you'll be a spiritual person, a truly Holy Spirit person. You do have him. He's in your life 
if you're trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's great news. And let's just celebrate that and live out of that today. And God bless you.